assignment or part of it. If you have a chance to, to pick up or to listen to Friday's uh, teaching, we, we have it online, praise the Lord, and Brother Ashton and I have been working uh, on, on making it available. We understand that availability is extremely important, amen, especially in this day and age. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing for you to, uh, to listen to the word, but to listen to it repeatedly so that whatever you missed the first time, you can pick it up on the second time, amen. And we read uh, 1 Timothy on Friday, but I want to read it today, and I want to focus on one, one scripture, and we're going to develop that and uh, expand it, and then uh, after that, we're going to have a great time, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have uh, uh, Myra's family who's also invited today. I want to welcome you all. Uh, God bless you. Uh, we're going to be presenting a child, and that's, that's all right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing. But the most important thing to understand is as a child is being raised, to have full knowledge. As a parent, I always pray for knowledge. And for wisdom, for me not to miss some things. Uh, as, as a child is being raised, there's a lot of mistakes that are made because the parent just doesn't know what to do. And you can't blame someone who doesn't know what to do. Uh, some of us, perhaps, if you were raised and, and, and you, after being grown, you realize uh, how things should have been done. There has to be a bit of mercy uh, in your heart to say, you know what? Uh, my folks didn't know everything, but they did the best that they know how. Amen. As long as you do the best that you know how, it, you know, you're all right. But in this day and age, sometimes it's not enough to do the best that you know how. Sometimes you just need extra guidance as a parent so you can be a good leader. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was hearing Dr. Miles Monroe and his definition of training is, is to be like a train. That the only thing when you see a locomotive, the train is only the first cart. Everything after that, they're not called train, they're called cars. The train is the one that has the engine. The train pulls everything behind it. Amen. And if the train has power, then everything else will be a recipient of everything that's in the train. And so, therefore, we get the word training. <laughs> Amen. That is to, to link. You, you want to know how to get there? Just link onto me and follow me. The apostle says, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. And sometimes in society, you're going to find people who they don't have a father. You ought to look at them. If you, if you find a, a wayward son and you find an orphan son uh, who's out there in the street, you say, follow me. You want to learn how to, how to have a good family? Follow me. I got a good family. You want to learn how to have a good relationship with your wife? Follow me. You want to know how to uh, be a good steward? Follow me. Amen? But isn't it true for you to have somebody do that, you got to be your own, get your own act together. Amen? And so we'll always have a dual uh, responsibility to lead, but then to always hold ourselves accountable and get our act together. Amen? Because if we were to follow you around all day, what would we learn? Would we grow? We would be stagnant. What, what would happen if I followed you around all day? What would I be trained in? What would I become? Amen. I'm not even going to mess with that right now. We got some work to do. Amen. But if you open up your Bible, so Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Actually, no, no, no. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 12 after this, but go to 1 Timothy again. That's my bad. Romans, I'm sorry, I keep saying Romans. I'm in love with Romans. 1 Timothy chapter 4, amen, and verse 14. You got it? Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Somebody say in you. Which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things and you, on these things, and give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. I'm going to read that again. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. The gift that is in you. I want to preach from the subject, it's in you already let's pray father as we go into your word open our minds our hearts and our ears that our whole body may be engulfed in learning that we may lord god take what is written and make it alive ingest it and put it to work lord god that fruit may come out of it and 
I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On your way down, give somebody a high five. Tell them I'm happy to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be seated quickly. We have work to do. Now go to Romans. I don't know about you, but I find the word of God fascinating. The word says that the, the word of God is living and powerful. It is living and powerful. Very few times will you ever read a book that is living and powerful. You find books that have powerful information. But a, a book that is living and powerful. The only way that a book can be living and powerful, it, it has to jump. The, the, the words in the page have to jump out and give life. Okay? These words, you'll be amazed how much life you get by just submitting to it and dedicating your life to it. Amen? Because in the submission, there is a process. Somebody say process. Every time the Lord wants to teach you something, he teaches you through a process. He'll never just throw something on you. Everything in your life is going to be processed. Amen? Amen. There's a process for a lot of different things. There's a process. If you get a brand new job, in order for you to go uh, from, from one rank to another, there has to be a process in you. You, can't, you don't want to jump into something that you have no preparation for, even though the money's right, okay? even though the opportunity sounds good. You can't just fall for the opportunity. You have to understand you got to submit to the process. Okay? It, it would be crazy for you to, uh, for you to uh, just come out of college and they offer you a job as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and you say, okay, I'll take it. Only to find yourself making a fool out of yourself because you have taken on a position that you are not ready for. Amen? Not every door that opens is for you. Yet. It might not be for you yet. If the door is open, praise the Lord for it. It doesn't mean you're going to have to go through it yet. God has a process for you. There was, there was a friend of mine that we had, uh, I had worked with him for years. And uh, in this company, it, it, it provided opportunity for us to get an uh, insurance license and for us to get a Series 6 investment license. And with that license, you can do a lot of things. But we got the license trained to only do one certain thing. And so he left the company and figured, I have these licenses. Let me apply uh, for different jobs so that I can, you know, I, have a, I took some leadership classes and I, I took this little test and I passed the test. And so he sees a job opening uh, for a, a branch manager, okay, for a bank. Very prestigious position and the salary was extremely comfortable. And, and I said in me, I said, uh, man, I, don't, I hope he makes it because he has the licenses, but and he has the words to put in the resume, okay? But he doesn't have the life experience or the process to go through it. Well, to make a long story short, what do you think happened? Wow. He got the job, okay? He got the job. He got paid a couple of weeks. But once they, once they started to see, it, do you got the goods? Do you know what you're talking about? Do you even know what these paperwork is? Uh, do you know how to lead people? He, he, he had tried to skip the process. And because he skipped the process, when the pressure was put on, he didn't have what it took to withstand the pressure. And it was simple pressure. It's just that he didn't know. Amen? He had an image of what he was supposed to be, but he didn't really have a fulfillment for the readiness of the position. Amen? So in verse number 1, in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, that, that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, even though, uh, if, if you haven't read the Bible, okay, you, you, have to, you have to open up your spirit to understand, because sometimes the Bible and, so, and some versions that we have, uh, they don't always lend themselves to easy interpretation based on the language that we speak today right. in 2013. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it'll take a, 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 a specific revelation. My job to you is to uh, eat it first and then make it in a way that you can understand. So this is what it is saying. It is saying that you're going to have to submit to a process continually. I beseech you that you present your whole bodies. Your body has to be a living sacrifice. It means you're going to have to put yourself on the table. And once you push yourself on the table, the Lord receives the sacrifice. 
once he received the sacrifices, okay, when a sacrifice is put before the Lord, the Lord consumes the sacrifice. means he uses the sacrifice. And he says, this is holy and acceptable to God. means when you give yourself to God, the Lord accepts you as a sacrifice. How many say amen to that? Okay. Uh, almost every religion, whether they're, the, uh, and they're good religions and bad religions and all kind of stuff, every religion requires a sacrifice. Even witchcraft. Witchcraft is a sacrifice. And they sacrifice this and they sacrifice that, all that kind of stuff. Because what they want to do is they want to, to put something on the table because everybody knows for you to get, you have to give. But what the Lord says, he doesn't want you to sacrifice a chicken. He doesn't want you to go and sacrifice three cockroaches. He wants you to sacrifice yourself. But not to the point of bloodshed. For Jesus already shed his blood so that no one else had to shed their blood. He did the work. So what is the sacrifice that he's asking for? Is a sacrifice of what? Of the mind. It is to put your mind in a, in a submissive state to say, Lord, here is my mind. Do with it what you will. This is the sacrifice. That your will is first and not mine. That I'm going to think what you want me to think instead of thinking what I want to think. That is a sacrifice. Because everything in us wants to make our own way, wants to find our own way. How to make money, I, I have an idea. I got to do it this way, this way, this way. And the Lord says, well, that's good, not yet. And we don't want to hear not yet. We want to hear now. Amen? We hear that all the time patience is a virtue, but we don't like patience. Patience can be a bad word sometimes. Because patience requires you to wait and to wait submissively without knowing when this is going to happen. How many of us like that? Can you imagine going to a restaurant and they say, uh, ma'am, just sit patiently. We have no idea when you're going to be seated, but you will be seated. You will lose your mind, especially if you're hungry. Amen? Amen? Amen. I mean, like going to Outback on Mother's Day. You will lose your mind. And if you're hungry, you, you just better eat on the outside or something like that. Just eat something real quick and, you know, go to McDonald's and come back. You still go, you'll, be, you'll be hungry again by the time you be seated. So patience is not something that is readily available uh, or, or comes natural to us. And even if it does, we don't want it. Because why wait when we can just have it now? Amen? But it's a dangerous thing for you to have something that you're not ready for. Amen? How many, how many agree with what I'm saying right now? It's a dangerous thing for you to have something and you not be ready for. Amen? There's a lot of folk that, that have a lot of things that are premature. You don't want a blessing premature. You want a blessing on time. I, I love brothers who are impatient because the more impatient you are, that it shows that more and more that you are not ready. Amen? Because patience, when you walk with God, you start noticing that if it ain't happening, you better thank God it hasn't happened yet. Because if you really do an inventory of what you have inside and you start comparing it to what you need for the task that you want, you will find yourself short. You're praying to be a leader, but then, uh, but then if we follow you around, what are we going to see? And if there's anything in that picture that you say, well, I don't want people to follow this about me, you ain't ready. What do you want? Something that you are not ready for, only to make a fool out of yourself. You get hired and fired. It's the most embarrassing thing to be fired for incompetence. Incompetent. You are not competent. You, you, you don't have what it takes to be here. We saw your paper and the resume looked good, but when you started to work, you were not who you wrote you were. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But there's a solution to that. Amen? It says, do not be conformed to this world. When it says, do not be conformed to the world, it is, it is indicative of the fact that the world already has a form. The world already has a mindset. The world already has a stereotype based on what part of the world you live in. There's certain parts of the world that if you are a doctor, that's a big deal. There's other parts of the world that they can care less about who's a doctor because they make their own natural medicine. If you go, if you go to Alaska and, and, and you go to the, to the mountains of Alaska where, where everybody's remote and they have to still uh, hunt for themselves, they understand that to be a doctor is not a big deal because they don't go to the doctor, they make their own medicine. For you to go to the doctor is because you're already dying already. So to them, being a doctor is not a huge thing. If you go to Africa and you're a doctor, that's a huge thing because they're really into medicine. Uh, and so if you become a doctor, they say you can go to the United States and you can do this. And, and for them, the horizons open up. But if you go to the mountains of Alaska, if you're a hunter, you're a somebody. So it depends on where you are in the world, your environment will dictate how, what it is formed to. So, so the Lord says, do not be conformed to this world. 
That means wherever part of the world you live in, and we're here in New Jersey, New Jersey is already formed with a certain mindset, okay? Uh, certain neighborhoods, even to the point of certain blocks that you live in, will have a certain mindset. Have you ever noticed that from city to city there's a different, different culture? From, from county to county, there will be a different culture. It's because the world has already a custom. They develop things based on society, and it says do not be conformed to the world. Don't mold yourself based by what you see because you will immediately become average and ordinary. People love to hide in average and ordinary because it doesn't push you to be who you really are supposed to be. You can just kind of hide in the cut. If you be like everybody else, you can kind of hide in the cut. I don't know how many of y'all in high school got sick and tired of hiding in the cut. I mean, if, if, you wouldn't, if you weren't telling jokes like everybody else, you weren't cool. If you weren't dressing like everybody else, it would be a problem. And so we learned early on in school that you had to conform to the high school or else you were going to be outed. And to be outed was painful. So let me just shut up and blend in. And sometimes we don't want to blend in, but for the sake of survival <laughs> and not catching a beatdown, okay, you have to just blend in. But now you've grown, and the Lord wants you to not be conformed to this world because there is possibly something better than what you see. How many say amen to that? But it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So how do you, how do you be you okay, and hold on to your individuality at the same time, okay, be transformed by God? If you don't know God, this sounds like manipulation. If you don't have a relationship with God, it seems like, why does God want me to be what he wants me to be all the time? Why don't I just be me? Here's the thing. They're both right. It doesn't look like God is manipulating something. But it's also true that you have to be yourself. Could it be that who you want to be and who God wants you to be is the same person? Could it be that you have an image of what is it that you want in life and how you want to, and God says, I also have an image of how you want, and I want you to, and sometimes we fight God, and we're both doing the same thing. The difference is, how are you going to do this, your way or his way? His way is faster. His way has less speed bumps. His way has less heartache. Less heartache. And I, when I say heartache, I mean long term. Oh, you're going to suffer a little bit. Amen? Anybody who got a cracked up back, you go to a chiropractor, you're going to crack you up a little bit. Yeah. There's certain things that have to get cracked before you start lining things up. Amen? And, and so you have to do whatever it takes. If you have to get broken and molded up again, then you have to get broken and molded up again. So it is a trust implication here that I got to trust God. Now, I got to be transformed by the renewing of my... That means... See, the word renew, I love the word renew. It, 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 without telling you that you are antiquated, it's telling you that you're antiquated. Without telling you that you're all jacked up, it's telling you that you are jacked up. Without saying that you're probably already on, on, on you need an update, it's telling you that you need an update. Okay, especially nowadays, stuff needs to update almost all the time. Your phone needs to be updated all the time. Computers have to be updated all the time. Software is updated all the time. When was the last time you got an update? Or you're still thinking like back in, you know, 98. Back in 2005. It's 2013. You need an update. So it says be, you got to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. As he renews you and updates you on what's going on in the world, your spirit will start to elevate and the gifts that he put in you will start to match your environment on the outside. Can we go a little deeper? Now, Let's, let's read about verse number, well, let's keep going, right? We doing good so far? Yes. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. He is giving a precursor and a warning. He's saying, don't think of yourself more highly than what you ought to think. Now, this is a problem if you have a low self-esteem because you're thinking, I don't think of myself highly anyway. So how could I not think of myself more highly? I should not think of myself any lower than what I am. It, it lets you know that when you start hanging out with God, he gives you a healthy self-esteem. He gives you so healthy self-esteem that he says, you're going to feel so good about this process. Don't get carried away thinking that you got it. 
you're going to love this process so much that what I want you to do is submit to the process and love what you're doing, but don't get caught up in the world. Because what the, to be uh, conformed to the world is you get success, people elevate you and praise you, you believe it, you get proud, you get ruined. That's the, that's the pattern of the world. People gas you up, they soup you, oh, you're so great, oh, you're so wonderful, oh, you're so wonderful. And then what happened is they idolize you, and you set yourself up because as soon as you become an idol, you become also, you become a target. Worst thing you can do is to allow somebody to idolize you because you are setting yourself up. You ever heard that expression, don't believe the hype? Listen, it couldn't be more true. Don't let them hype you up. Don't let them idolize you, put you picture, because as soon as they do that, they're going to make you conform to the world. They'll put you in a box, and if you ever mess up, God help you if you mess up in their eyes, because they will crucify you. They love you today, and they'll hate you tomorrow. And so you can't be over one way or the other. Said, so do not love yourself more than what you ought to. Amen? Can we continue in this? Are y'all getting it so far? For God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Everyone in this room, you have been dealt or handed. Okay, dealt is a, is a, is a uh, that's a, that's a, a card, card man's game, right? Uh, you got to deal the cards, okay? So if we're dealing cards, everyone has been dealt a measure of faith. Three for you, four for you, here you go. Everybody, if God got the, the whole stack in his hand, he has dealt everyone a measure of faith. Based on what you have in your hands is what you can do in life. You have a measure of faith. Amen? You getting it so far? Verse number four. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So we are interconnected with him and with each other. Because we all have different gifts. It means this. There's no competition with you. There should never be competition with who you are. If you're in a family and you're raising your family, there'll never be competition. Even though your child want to be just like you, they'll never be just like you. Ain't no such thing. That's why we have to harbor individuality in our family and push it. Your child should not be just like you. Stop that. Stop that. It doesn't work. You're going you're gonna to break the kid. The kid will never be like you. Consequently, you don't want that kid to be like you. You don't want the kid to be like you. That doesn't help you. Amen? You want somebody that's going to contribute to your family, but is not you. How many say amen to that? Amen? amen? Listen, if you're you and you're doing you right, why do you need two of you for? How, how can you compliment each other? It's crazy how I see some husbands, they want their wife to be like them. Oh, she's not like me, you know, because I'm tough. I'm tough-minded, you know what I'm saying? I'm tough. She got to be like me. Why? You're tough because you're numb. You're tough because you don't feel anything. And, and, you're, and you're so broken that you just don't listen to anything. So now when your kid comes, she want, she, you want her to be like you? Somebody has to be cold and somebody has to be hot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There has to be a complementary thing. You have to balance each other out. You don't want people to be like you. You want people to be like them, and then you want to connect with people that complement your existence, not compete with your existence. You know you're in the right circle when there is no competition, but everybody is working in harmony, being the best that they all can be. Can you imagine if we live in a world that everybody did what they were good at? You see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of attorneys, but not every attorney specializes in the same thing. There's a lot of musicians, but they don't all have the same genre of music. We need variety, and the only way we get variety is that you be who you are. Right. Amen? Amen? So he says this, verse number 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, <coughs> let us use them. Here's the challenge. You have to use what you got. Look at your neighbor and say, use it or lose it. Listen to me, this is true. What do we just read in 1 Timothy? Do not neglect the gift that is where? It's in you. It's already in you, amen? So now that you know it's in you and it's different from anybody else, the Bible says let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in portion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it to ministering. He who teaches, 
do it in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with, liberal, uh, with liberality, uh, and he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness, and all those, in essence, what it's saying, if you're going to do it, do it right. If you're going to dare to be who God has called you to be, do it, but do it in excellence. See, excellence is different than, than comparing who's the best. This is not mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. Uh, you only are excellent according to you. You can be excellent, okay? That's why you cannot be conformed to the world because the world has the image of what's excellent. To the world, excellent means that you are better than everyone else. You should not be better than everyone else. You're wasting valuable time. You should only be better than yourself. Shall I explain? If I'm a certain way, I don't have to change. I just have to be better at being me because I can be me all day long. It doesn't stress me to be me. It'll stress me to be what you want me to be. That'll stress me out because now I'm an actor who never, who never gets off the set. See, even the acting, they say cut, and then you go back to yourself. And they say action, and you go into character. But when you fall into the system of the world, you, it, your lights are always on. And it comes to a point in time you get tired, and then you snap and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. And that's why you see a man will get married on the pretenses of acting like somebody. She fall in love with the character that he's playing until when they say, I can't do this no more. I'm not like that. They say, oh, but we started. You were like that. What happened now? Well, I was never him. And after five years, I'm tired. I'm not acting no more. That's it. Lights off. That's it. Cut. I'm going to the dressing room. I'm acting myself now. I'm tired of this. You get tired when you are not yourself. But when you're yourself and you meet somebody while you are yourself, you can do it forever and ever and ever. Because you'll never get tired of being you. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Okay. That's why verse number 9 says this. Let love be without hypocrisy. In the ESV it says, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lacking in diligence. Or another version says, not lazy or not sloth. But fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Continue steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saint, giving to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Listen to this now. This has everything to do with you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who reap. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. It means do not think of yourself more higher than what you're supposed to. Don't associate with that stuff. Don't set your mind on high things. Because the gift of God is already going to put you up there. So don't, you got to make sure that you submit your mind because the Lord will advance your body. That, so don't let people idolize you. Get your mind off of the pedestal. Because what happened is since the world already has a system, they're already ready to idolize you when you're doing your thing. You ever seen anybody just do their thing? They're not even trying to be famous. They're just doing their thing. They get famous doing their thing. Michael Jordan didn't want to play baseball so he can, or, or, or basketball so that he can be famous. He did it because he had a desire to be good. So he wanted to do the best that he can. Consequently, it made him famous. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? The accolades that you get in the world, you don't have to look for them. Amen? You don't look for accolades. You look to be the best that you can. You're going to have to fight the accolades because they will not be a friend to you. They'll be an enemy. The trophies will kill your potential. Amen? They'll kill your humility because you're going to set your mind on high things. And when you set your mind on high things, you better be retired or dead. Because after you set them up here, ain't no worlds to go. Amen? Because you, you have now skipped the process. Amen? Such a neighbor said, don't skip anything. Now it says, now it's talking to something. It says, ah, bless those who persecute you. Now we're talking about all the good stuff. And now the Bible throws a persecution in the middle of a good story. Why is it that every, every time we get blessed, there's always persecution lurking? 
Why is it that when you do good, there's always somebody that's going to be jealous and envious and hateful about what you're doing? Let me explain that. Because when you do good, okay, people will become envious because they want what they see. They don't not necessarily want to want to go through the, what you went through to be that. They see what you are and they want to be that. Why? Because they have it in them to also be better. But it's but since they're no leader in their life, they're saying, "Look, don't get upset. Just get better." What they do is they're gonna hate on you because you look like you got it together. You really don't got it together. It just looks like it. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, now you see how the world gets transformed. You're not even hundred percent. They think that you are. They start to idolize you. That's why you got to stay away from it. Don't curse yourself by letting people put things on you that you are not. Not even Jesus did it. They went to Jesus and said, and he was talking and teaching, and they, and, and, and they, called, they said, good master. He said, who's good? He said, nobody's good. Nobody but the Father. Jesus himself is saying, don't call me good. It's not necessary for you to blow me up. And so I know who I am. I didn't come here to get blown up. That's after the resurrection you praise me. But right now, don't worry about that. I, I came to do a job. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Can you postpone the hand clap until you get your job done? Can, can you do that? Can, can you just do your job without being applauded? Can you just do what you were called to do and hold the applause until I'm dead? But well, we, we can't live like that. But ain't that the truth? Martin Luther King didn't get applauded until he was, he didn't get a holiday while he was alive. They just started making movies on, on Lincoln. Years later, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, hold the applause, hold the applause. Hold the applause, hold the applause. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. <laughs> you don't need nobody saying, oh, you're such a good father. You're a wonderful father. Let's have, let's have a wonderful day for you. And you're a mother. You're a wonderful mother. And every day, if you don't get accolades, you don't, you don't perform. <clears throat> accolades, uh, accolades can be a distraction. That's why you don't set your mind on high things. You humble yourself and do the job that you were called to do. Amen. Okay, I'm, I'm getting to it, amen? Bless those who persecute you, amen? Bless those. Look at verse number 17. Repay no evil for evil. Have regard for things in the sight of all men. If possible, if possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. The implication is that there will be people that it was not possible for you to live at peace with. As much as it depends on you. So you're going to try your best. But if the person refuses to submit and they just want to give you a hard time, nothing you can do about it. You cannot live in peace. Hello, somebody. See, people have this image that Christians, that, that you know, you just got to get smacked in the left cheek and the right cheek and you got to turn the back of your head and your forehead and you got to, no, no, no. If, if after one cheek, that's it. We ain't going to get along. I'm, I'm trying my best, but I only got two cheeks. That's, that's, that's enough. It comes to a point that you have to separate for the sake of your own survival. How many say amen? amen. Now, as much as it depends on you, leave peace with all men. Verse number 19, beloved, beloved. I love when he said beloved means loved ones. Do not avenge yourselves. Do not avenge yourselves. Do not avenge yourselves. Why would he say that? Is it for us to be weak people? Is it for us to be abused of the world? Is it for us to suffer persecution and no one comes to our aid? Is it for us to suffer injustice and nobody comes to rescue us? Is, is it for people to commit things against us and nothing happens and they get away with it? Ooh. Nobody gets away with anything. Let's see if that's true. He says, but rather, give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Now, I, I, want you to, I want to warn you about this. When the Lord says, I will repay, be very careful. Because the way the Lord has unconditional love for you, he has unconditional justice for those who commit treason against his people. He, he will not cease until he finds justice for your life. He, he won't stop 
until you find until he finds justice for his people. How many say amen to that? So here's what I want you to understand. If Sister Liz commits something against me, and I, through my intelligence, want to punish her for what she said about me, I have a certain way of thinking that I think would hurt her. But it is possible that by me hurting her, I hurt myself. Because I'm going to do something that's probably going to be something familiar to me, which means that can turn against me. So I'm not doing my part. I'm not trying to live at peace. I'm trying to be contentious, and the tension doesn't work. So here's what the Lord says. Listen, do yourself a favor. The way you're going to hold the applause, also hold the revenge. Hold the applause. Look at what he's telling you. Hold the applause. Hold the revenge. Stay focused. Hold the applause. Hold the revenge. Stay focused. He goes, I got your applause, okay, and I got your revenge. I will hold back the walls. Just like the sea was parted and the people of Israel were able to go through from slavery to freedom because the walls were parted. And so God will put things on the side so you can focus and keep going through. It is not, the Israelites were not supposed to hold the water and walk. They were only supposed to do what? Walk. And every time you think that you got to fight your own battles, you're holding the wall trying to get free. You ain't never going to be free holding up the walls. You only get free when you walk forward. And make it to the other side. Amen? Amen? So when the Lord says vengeance is mine, it means that he already got something in mind for that joker. He already got something. And let me tell you something. It's a scary thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. Are you, listen, I've seen it with my own eyes. That when I see what happens to somebody who messes with me, you know what I say? I said, Lord, you know what? Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Because I've already seen what you do to people who mess with us. So let me not even take it personal. Let me just let that one go because if you grab them, it's a wrap. Because here's your idea. Somebody messes with you, you're going to tell them about themselves. You, you know, you're mean and you're this and that and that. And you think that that did something. The person going to curse you even more. But when the Lord grabs them, he don't, tell, he, don't tell them, he don't tell them, I think you're this. He says, this is who you are since you were three. You have evil in your heart, and I rebuke you. And the person just, <laughs> you ever had somebody just apologize to you, and you weren't, you weren't sure how did they come to the conclusion that they offended you? Yeah, it's because God got to them. I mean, God will give you a dream, a nightmare. He'll scare you until you say, I got to go apologize to this clown. This, this is not even funny. Because what the Lord does, he, he, he'll, he'll, he don't have to intimidate nobody. He's just telling the truth about yourself. To let the person know you're so haughty and proud. You have the nerve to go in front of my people and tell them about them. Let me tell you about you. After Job has suffered everything, Job had to give all his reasons why God uh, had put him in this predicament. And he gave all his reasons about all these things that he thought was right. And, and around verse number 39, the Lord says, I ask enough, Job. I will answer you and I will speak to you. Now he says, prepare yourself like a man, for I will speak to you and you will answer me. Can you imagine God talking to you like that? Now, he talks like that to his boys. Can you imagine an enemy of the people of God? I'm not going to touch that no more. The only thing I'm going to tell you is do not avenge yourself. You will do yourself a disservice. When God ends it, he ends it and he kills it. Amen? Why is this important? Because you have a gift, and your gift is so important that it cannot be messed with anything. So God doesn't want your gift messed with intimidation. He doesn't want your gift mixed in with haters. He don't want you to throw a pedestal and celebrate all your life. All he wants you to do is stay focused. Now, here's what I want you to understand. I'll get to the point. I'll close. Here's what he wants from you, to understand that you have a gift in you. He says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. It means you have a gift already. This one sister that we're, that, that, that we're developing in Spanish service, uh, today, first time, Sister brought a word. Praise the Lord, she brought the word. And during the end, we started speaking, and it was wonderful. First time she ever did it, it was the greatest thing ever, right? It's great to see somebody that has the gift. I didn't coach her. I just said, let me try my theory. My theory is if somebody got it, they got it. They might not be polished, but they got it. She might not be perfect, but she got it. And, and I, said, I said, my feedback to you is that you use yourself for feedback. I said, take the tape, listen to it, and you yourself will start to critique yourself. That's, that's what I did. I never took a class or anything like that. I just listened to myself, and I cringed at my own self. 
Have you ever, have you ever recorded yourself? Listen, best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. You got a cell phone, okay? Just, just record yourself, send yourself a voicemail, and just start talking your most powerful thoughts. Just say, just say I'm going to talk for five minutes about what I think life, life is about, okay? And just, just press stop, and after five minutes, just play it back. And you're going to see a sharp difference between what is in your spirit and what is manifested, what comes out of that, that recording. You say, what am I saying? I said that? But that's not what I meant to say. That, that's not what I wanted to say. It, isn't that all of our arguments? You said this, but brother, that I don't mean to say that. Miscommunication happens all the time because we have something in us, but when it comes out, it comes out wrong. But what's, what are you upset about? Because you know it's, it was in you, but it didn't come out right. So what is it to develop your gift to have what is in you come out right? That's what I'm saying. It's already in you. You, you, don't, you don't need to get more. You need to just what's in you to get it out. That's why it says don't neglect the gift that is in you. If you can preach it, you got to preach. You can evangelize, you can evangelize. If you can start a business, start it. And that's why it's important for you to be a good steward. That's why it's important when you do something to write all your numbers down. Because you can feel that you're doing business right. When you look at your numbers, say, I'm overspending. I'm not doing it right. It doesn't mean that you don't have a gift. It means that you have a gift, but it's coming out wrong. And so what you got to do is keep working it. Keep working it. And through working and experience, you will see that your job in life is to match what is inside with what is outside. And as you listen to yourself, you're going to realize that's not, that's not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say something better. So here's what you do. Record yourself again. And you keep doing it until you become on the outside what you are on the inside. And you'll know if what's on the inside is corrupt. And so what you do is you have to purify yourself. How? By the word of God. When you submit your life to God, he will purify your thoughts. And sometimes you cannot even get it outright because you have a gift, but you're so polluted on the inside. That sometimes what comes out is not even the gift. It's all the, it's all the garbage that's on the surface of you. The anger because of the things you went through when you was a kid. The heartbreak that happened in high school. All this stuff comes out to the surface. So when you talk, even though you want to say so in your talking, there's negativity. In your talking, there is unbelief. In your statements, there's little pictures of what's on the surface of you. Are you are, can anybody say amen to that? Yeah. H- have you ever caught yourself being negative, but you weren't trying to be negative? But just as you started talking, you started getting agitated about something, and, and then you realize, uh, we're not talking about this anymore, are we? Yeah. Have you ever started talking about something, and then you ended up with something else? Yeah. And you went totally off the topic, because what was bothering you floated to the surface. And you didn't even know what was happening. And subconsciously, you're acting out something that you didn't want to in the first place. But don't ever ever forget that the gift is already in you. It's already in you. It's already in you. When I learned how to play the drums, I knew that I had had instruments in me. I I knew I wasn't probably going to do it, but I knew it was in me. And I had beats in my head. I had it in my head, and I heard it in my head. But when I sat down to play, it didn't sound like that. And the whole thing about being a musician is getting what's in your head on your fingers. To getting what's in your head uh, on, 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 on the piano. See, Brother Ash knew how to play the piano before he knew how to play the piano. There's certain songs that are in his mind that he cannot play physically. Am I right about it or not? Amen. Brother Tito, there's certain riffs uh, and there's certain, there's certain cuts on, a, on, on the drums that you can play in your head. But when it comes to manifest, you say, I need to practice. Be- because I need to, what's in me, to get it out on the outside. Amen, somebody? Amen. There's some of you that you know how to, how to raise your child and you know how to talk to your child. But when you talk to your child, the only thing that comes out is anger. What do you do when the wrong thing keeps coming out? You open yourself up now. 
That's why you need to have a circle of influence that you allow them to say, brother, hold you accountable. Right. How, how did that sound? How did that sound? You, you, you heard me. You, that's why you got to go to your wife and say, and, and you rebuke your child. Say, was I too rough? Because this is what I was trying to teach him. Well, you were trying to teach him that, but what, the implication of what you said was this and this and this. Right. That's not what I was trying to say. Let me go back. Hello, somebody. How many of you have called the kid back and said, you know what? I corrected you wrong. This is what I was trying to say. If you didn't, if you didn't get, get into the habit of correcting yourself, don't just let it go on because you can ruin somebody's life like that. That's why we apologize. That's why we always come humble because you could be doing it wrong. So you humble yourself. No, I said, Cosa, that you messed up. Right? You don't want to do it. You never know. if you. So the Bible says, don't think of yourself highly than what you think. Just because you can play the piano, don't think of you that you're the best. You're doing the best that you can and be excellent on your level. That's all that God wants you to do. And you can do that all day. It doesn't cost you nothing to be you. But it does cost you to be a better you. You're going to have to put your whole self as a sacrifice. Because the best you, according to your mind, is also the best you that God has in his mind. Can you imagine if you stopped fighting and worked together with God to produce the you that he wanted you to be? Instead of fighting, submit. You get there faster. You actually enjoy the process instead of stumbling all the time. Ultimate satisfaction comes when you are not doing only what you want physically, but spiritually there's satisfaction. That what I see myself doing in my heart, it will actually manifest outside. And God is the only one that will make the connections happen so that that can actually come to pass. Amen? Amen. What would you do if you became the person that you have in your heart? What would you do? When I was in sale sales a couple years ago, I, I, I would do the presentation, right? My, I had my, my sales presentation going on, right? And I said, it's pretty good. And so I would do it with a couple of, you know, uh, 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 guys at, at, the, at the job. And I said, look, this is, this is what it is. It's pretty good, right? And they were like, uh, you know, shy. But no, it's my, my stuff is good, right? Yeah, 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 it's good, it's good. And the boss came to me and said, uh, you need to work on it. I said, what you mean? He goes, you, he goes, you know you don't smile? When you talk, I said, I smile. Trust me, bro, I smile. <laughs> I'm telling somebody else what they see on the outside. I, I'm, I don't look at, I'm, I'm on the inside of me, and I'm talking some other stuff, amen? That's why we need mirrors, okay? Right, and real friends to say, hey, you got a, you know, you got a booger where it doesn't belong. <laughs> a real friend ain't going to tell you that, right? <laughs> and so he said, well, let, me, let me do something. <laughs> So he puts a video camera, right? And as he put the video camera, okay, I'm doing my thing. I'm thinking that I'm smiling. I actually tried, right? Subconsciously, I was smiling. So he goes, okay, that's what's up. Play this video. I'll be back in a half hour. I was so, I wanted to shut it off. You ever, it was painful. It was painful to watch myself. I was like, stop the tape. <laughs> no! I swore I was laughing! I said, they must have edited this video because I was smiling. And I had no idea that I was not smiling because I had an image on the inside that I was not portraying on the outside. Outside, I wasn't congruent with what was on the inside. And you will find that operating in your gift is always a process of being in congruency what's on the inside, let it be on the outside. Amen? That's why the Bible teaches that what ruins a man is not what goes into your mouth, but what comes out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you want to change what's on the outside, you change what's in your heart. If you change your heart, you keep practicing, now you're going to have to look in the mirror and say, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Is this what I wanted to say? That's why it's necessary for us to apologize when we don't get it right. Listen, brother, I'm sorry. That's not what I tried to say. This is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes we focus so much on trying to say what we're trying to say, and we don't say what we're trying to say. Sometimes you just cut to the chase. Look, this is what I'm trying to say. 
instead of trying to make it nice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's necessary for us to have a higher level of communication if we really want to be effective in the things that God wants them to be. So in closing, here's my question. If you were the person that God already has in your heart, what would that look like? Don't you think that we all deserve to see that person? Don't you think that we need that person in our society? There are certain things that bother you, and you see the solution, and you don't act on it. Because in your spirit, you're still struggling with the spirit of a sloth. Sloth is slow and lazy, and it doesn't want to produce outwardly what is on the inside. And it's necessary for you to keep doing it and awaken yourself. How? By the renewing of your mind. You have to hang around from now on. You're going to have to run people who think deeper than you, who think faster than you, who have better thoughts than you. You need to be around people who challenge you. You got to be around people who are gifted like you, who make you feel silly. That your ideas, their ideas are so much more powerful than yours, you feel silly with yours. It'll make you go back and pray. It'll make you go back and do your homework. It'll make you go back and study. The best thing, the best thing for a musician is to hang out with a musician who's better than him. Who, who, can, who can play. Best thing Ashley can do is get somebody who can play nicer than him. Right. And is more skilled and faster. It'll make him say, ooh, I got to go back to work. <laughs> I got to go back to work. Merle and I went to this convention, uh, the Gideon Project in, in, in Dallas, Texas, and we were there, uh, and, and Bishop T.D. Jace was there, and Dr. Cynthia James, and, and all these other people were talking, and they're talking about how they developed the sermon, and, and he's playing around, okay? Bishop Jace is playing around. He grabs the scripture out of his head. And he exegetes the text. He recites the whole chapter verbally without practice. He said, I remember about 20 years ago, I remember this chapter. And he reads the whole chapter without the Bible. Then he starts to connect all the stuff that goes with it. And then he preaches it. Then he comes out of no revelation and he's playing around. I look at him earlier, I said, uh, <laughs> holy smokes. This guy is playing around, and that was the best thing I've heard all year. And he was playing with it. He was just showing. Let me just give you an example of how this is done. Brrr, boom! I said, I got to go back to work. I need to do homework. I, you know what I felt like? I felt like reading the Bible all over again. Like I, had, I never read the Bible in my whole life. I felt like I, felt like I was in kindergarten. I felt like I was in the kindergarten class. I, I was like, babe, we don't belong here. We, <laughs> we don't belong here. We're in the wrong, we, we, this is the wrong class. We need the beginners, express beginners class, because this is crazy. Because it's a wonderful thing to see somebody operating their gift. But it, take, it takes a while. Don't worry about how long it takes. You, you just get, you better get worried that you're going to get on the right track as soon as you can. Because with God, as long as you're on the right track, you're going to be all right. Even though you don't make it, as long as you'll be on the right track, you're already making it. Amen, somebody? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we give God a praise? Did you learn something today? Amen. Praise God.